Quest Rogue for Hunrace versus Odd Rogue for Sinto. And this is a tough matchup. This is Odd Rogue favored, but Quest Rogue can beat just about anything if it gets what it needs. And Hunrace, he made his climb this season with Quest Rogue. Oh, that hand is not what he needs. None will survive. What are you talking about? Once he plays Fleur, he can have two preps. Sick. Prep, prep. Concise. So, you know, being able to have preparation with Elven Minstrel is, is at least something, but Sinto Law uh, is on coin, and he has teched in two copies of Vicious Fledgling. You know, this is a card that you see so often in tournaments, and I feel like I see so rarely on ladder. You yeah. know, one of the big reasons is the targeting effect. When your opponents are playing the types of lineups you anticipate, Vicious Fledgling goes way up in value against that. On ladder, pretty much everybody plays a lot of removal just because you often need to kill something, you know, at the three health slot. Uh, Hunter Ace is targeting a completely different style of archetype, and yeah. this Vicious Fledgling is going to be massively punishing if it goes unchecked for just a short amount of time. Yeah, Hunter Ace has a single backstab in the deck. Well, man. But if he... <laughs> Prep's looking okay now, at least. We're a long sure. way off of that, <laughs> of that mattering, though. Yeah, Prep Vanish just... I, I guess it's really good against Rogue because... Look at the smile on Sintolo's face. Do you see that? Whenever your opponent just doesn't kill a Vicious Fledgling, I'm pretty sure there's not a single player out there who's not going to smile when they hit base <laughs> and get that adapt. Basically, the cards you're looking for in this matchup are the cards that are just going to help you survive until you can complete the quest. Yeah, and when they don't kill the first one... Yeah. Well, okay. But, you know, there's still one there. Yeah, but if he gives up the South Sea deck in, he's reliant on the top of his deck to have activation for this Elven Minstrel. I am looking exactly at deck hand prep vanish and then try to use deck hand to complete the quest mm. by comboing it with Elven Minstrel next turn and hoping that, that buys me enough time. Now, I want to follow that up with the caveat, I am not a quest rogue expert. I almost never play the deck, but I recognize a lot of trends about this deck by watching experts. And the things that they do are just take massive risks with their hand and the way the deck works out. The one tool that they don't seem to like to use very liberally is Vanish. But here, I think it's a necessity for Hunter Ace to not lose the game. Well, there's, there's you know, two different matchups that you're gonna play against. There's control matchups and there's the aggro matchups. And the aggro matchups, you really need to use Vanish early because you need to protect your life total and give yourself more options later. Against control decks, you want to be as greedy as possible with Vanish because they're not going to pressure you, and you want to be able to use Vanish to push for lethal, lethal later in the game. So this is an aggro matchup, so of course he's going to use it early because what are you going to do? Die. Take potentially 14 damage if those two get Wind Fury, not even accounting for if they get plus attack or plus one, plus one. I'm buying. <laughs> so I think... Not even that's a good play. That's a necessary play for him to just not die. Okay, so he's now he's now off the uh, South Sea deck pan plan for a little bit, and I think a big part of that is you know finding Giggling Inventor and being at a reasonable life total on your five mana turn. I, that's yeah. a really big step for Hunter Ace because having Giggling Inventor to back this up, having a little bit of card draw and Valera in hand means that he has a game plan. The game plan is get to Valera right now. It's not to complete quest. It's get to Valera. Yeah. Valera opens up so many options because you have a turn where Odd Rogue can't do anything but develop. Wow. That is a huge draw. Now now we've got a lot of defense. I'm completing the go. quest with Gigglers. That's not unreasonable with this hand. And Sintolol, he has a Blood Knight ready to go to punish the first one. What about the second mm. three or four? <laughs> that's, that's really where things start to get you know, a little bit weird. I remember it was day one, I turned on Killing All Day stream and I was like, I bet he's playing Quest Rogue. Day one of the new expansion. His opening hand was Quest Two Giggling Inventors. And I went, now that's not too shabby looking. Hmm. It's really good. <laughs> you can see every time Sinto has like a good thing to do, he just gets to like this, Almost like playfully smug smile on his face. He's like, hey, I got a blood knight. <laughs> Hunter Ace using the stone test border to try and take off attacks on the board to try and protect the life total as much as possible. It's wise. <laughs> Just 
Sindo's face is great. Glory to the Sindora. It's pretty darn good. Yeah, I mean, he could push five and develop a massive board. I mean, I don't know if Hunter Ace is going to be able to... Nope, just kidding. He has more. He wants to kill the, uh, the Giggly Mentor, so he can't be attacked. Yeah. And this threat is lethal here. Oh my goodness. I was ready to, to basically watch Hunter Ace die, and now he's going to live for a lot longer. This is tough, though. Giggling Inventor is coming I down this wonder. turn. But the question is, what do you do besides that? Because Sinto Alt does have another Blood Knight. So if Hunter Ace doesn't make a defensive play outside of that, say Glacial Shard on the on the Blood Knight, there's maybe potential that he could die. And then there's the, the option of, well, is Giggling Inventor the card that I want to complete the quest with? Or do I just want an extra one in my hand? Do I Shadow Sip it now? So if he does have another Blood Knight, he can't get through and kill my Giggling Inventor, so I can't Shadow Step it back. The other thing, too, is like SI7 Agent can kill the Giggling Inventor. Like, that Giggling Inventor is basically going to be one of the ways that Hunter Ace wins the game, if he wins the game. Yeah. You know, it could be Wax Elemental buying time later down the road, but you really want to play Giggling Inventor after you complete Quest. It's going to protect it now which I think is very wise. I think without that Giggling Inventor, Hunter Ace has a much lower chance to win. Yeah. He doesn't have any extra damage like SI7 Agent or South Sea Deckhand. So he can't get through the Glacial Shard. I'm not sure how much that matters. <laughs> and Sintolol wisely, after seeing the Shadow Step Giggler, wants oh, to make yeah. sure that he has as many attacks on the board to try and get through the Divine Shields and Anoyotrons. You know, your eyes go to Funko Man, so try and beef up the board as much as possible, but that's that, that option is always going to be there for you. You use that as a punish. You not as, yes. Oh my. Is that enough to to live? I mean, oh, for sure. With with yeah, the, with the giggler, he's in the same spot though. He doesn't necessarily want to risk the giggling inventor. I'm I'm curious, can he live without using the giggling inventor? Because he plays the Valera next turn, he can't die while the Valera's down. No way! Huge draw for Hunter Ace. That is insane. So now the question is, Valera is slated for next turn. Do you use the Vanish to make a power play after Valera, which I think you do? No, you do it now, you don't die, and then you win the game with Valera the Hollowed and two Giggling Inventors afterwards. That is a snap Vanish. That is the best draw in his deck. That was insane. Now he's got two turns to draw a Bouncer. The, my reasoning behind it was, when you play Valera, the only thing your opponent can do is develop. Yeah. So then you vanish behind that. So many options. And it take, it's really expensive for Odd Rogue to develop again. And so then you have multiple turns of Valera to get things going. That was, my reason, that was my reason behind holding onto the vanish, because Fan and Ice plus Giggling Inventor, you live there. Sometimes, because your well, your opponent only has four attacks on board. Actually, no, your opponent has three attacks on board because you kill off one of the Anoyotrons after the Phantom Knight. They have Blood Knight, one Anoyotron. Oh, that's true. I wasn't thinking about that. So you, you even live through a second Blood Knight. And so you, you open up this opportunity to be really greedy with Vanish. Okay. Wow. How about some more Gigglers? Yeah, well, they're going to have to wait. You cannot escape the Shadow Death. Hunter Race is, you know, typically not supposed to be at this high life total at this stage of the game. What, 24? Hunter 9? Yeah. As Quest Rogue versus Odd Rogue. It's, you know, it's quite rare that situation comes up. Well, both vanishes are gone. Yeah, I mean, Sintolo does have, you know, a bit of free reign where that's concerned.
And Hunter Ace, I mean, sure, he can complete the quest, but that's not the end game. You eventually have to kill your opponent. And Sintalaw has opportunities to make massive boards. Yeah, I mean, we're, our progress on the quest right now for Hunter Ace is, you know, two Saucy Deckhand and then two at Giggling Inventor. So this is kind of why I wanted to hold on to the Vanish. Because post Valera is, I don't know, it's a really tough decision. Is that Fungomancer a mistake? Why, because he can't Blood Knight? Yeah, he can't play he can't play Blood Knight next turn. He can't play any minions next turn. He has to use attacks to bust through the Anoyatrons. And he knows there's gonna be four Anoyatrons on board. It's impossible for him to deal damage next turn unless mm. like what could he draw? Well maybe he's thinking that he's always gonna have an opportunity to play Blood Knight because his opponent has Valera plus a giggling a, a discounted giggling inventor. And five cards in his hand that he count can't account for that are probably bouncers. So maybe he's thinking that he's always going to have an opportunity to play Blood Knight. And next turn, he just wants to get through these gigglers. Death's shadow I, I, I don't know. It's tough. Because you have to find a balance. He has to try and apply some pressure. Yeah, I'm just curious about, like, the Fungal Mancer, perhaps. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You just keep it up. Can you keep it up? Board? I guess keeping up board slot doesn't really matter either, unless you specifically want to Blood Knight afterwards. Yeah. But as it stands... You know, there's seven Divine Shields on the table that are no longer getting absorbed by Blood Knight. Well, look at that. That's annoying. Another Giggly Inventor. If I showed you this board, hmm. what, it, three it, years ago it when looks, Anoyotron came out? It looks like a weird lethal puzzle. <laughs> Like, this is one of the things for the gonna, new Boom I want to put this on Reddit just to troll people and say, find lethal. <laughs> See how long it takes people to realize that there is none. Hmm. Uh, you make these attacks, and then you push. Oh. I, I, Zero damage. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it literally doesn't matter what order the attacks go in. You just you push them around to make sure that, well, I mean, the one attack bands, yeah, it matters, but everything else just gets pushed around. You deal zero damage. You still have no board space. Yeah. Hunter Ace gets another turn. And this other turn. Look at Sinto. He's like, where did I go wrong? What He's, happened? I, I didn't do he any. He filled up his board. I didn't do anything that turn, but kill his Anoyotrons. And the Giggling Adventures are still up. So if Hunter Ace draws a bounce, he can just have more. At least next turn, Sinto Law can trade a minion in. Mind you, with the way the board state was, it was impossible for a card in Sintolol's deck, I think, to kill it. Period. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> Double Fan of Knives actually just clears the board. That's the turning point. That vanish that he drew. <laughs> and a Sonya to get the extra one mana. It's over. Giggling Inventor. It's not, he's not. Which completes the quest. Hunter Ace is not dead yet. But he, or I'm sorry, Sintolol's not dead yet, but Hunter Ace is one. He is, no, he's, he's dead. Turned the corner. 100% Sintolol oh, is not coming back from this situation. Yeah. That's crazy. Next turn, he could double quest to make his minions 4 fours again. Sick. <laughs> Sinto is just, yeah. He should not have filled up his board, and that was something he was not accounting for. He wasn't thinking about, well, what just happens if he plays two Giggling Inventors, and my board's full, and I can't do anything? Maybe even going back to the turn before that, when he played his own Giggling Inventor. Shouldn't have done that. Just play a couple of big things instead of a bunch of small things. Play the big stuff. Because you know... Keep one board space open, you get to make progress, because you get to Blood Knight away all the Divine Shields on the opposite side, yeah. and then kill all the minions that Hunter